Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I want to talk to you guys today about making power on the G4 FJ engine, the 1.6 turbo engine that's inside of the Veloster, as well as the Elantra, and I think the Kia Forte and the Kia Soul. Um, so just want to go over what it takes to make some power on those engines because that's what I needed when I was making this car two years ago. Um, so we're just going to jump into it. So the first thing, you're looking at the stock engine, your stock power level is probably going to be about 180 wheel horsepower from the factory. Um, some engines may vary up or down 5 or 10 horsepower, but that's what you're looking at on average. And the first steps you're going to be trying to tackle here are one, heat, and two, flow. So you got heat and flow are the two things we're trying to take care of to make some power on this car, largely from here all the way up to the top. But heat and flow are going to be really big in the beginning. So starting out, we're going to be talking about making it to, I would say most people try to uh, get to the full bolt on um, stage. Um, that power level is going to put you at about the 240, 250 wheel horsepower mark. So it's a good bump in power. All things considered, you also have a tune. Can't do this alone without a tune, but if you have these parts, that should this should be the power level you're expecting, all right? Now, if you're running a really hot tune, you might be able to make it all the way up to around 280 wheel horsepower, 300 wheel horsepower on full bolt-ons. And that is gonna be very dependent on really managing those two things, flow and heat. So, um, on the topic of more flow, Definitely want to get an intake so that way you remove all of your flow restrictions. You could have the closed box design, but um, just depends on one, if you want those turbo noises or not. Uh, you're definitely talking about getting a bigger throttle body. Um, the Elantra throttle body is, I want to say, 57 or 60 millimeters. So it's bigger than the stock throttle body. I want to say 60. Bigger than the thro stock throttle body, at least on the Veloster but it depends on what car you're running and the small little differences between them. If you're still running the stock intercooler, you might want to consider upgrading the piping. So there's a hot pipe upgrade, or at least the intercooler, intercooler resonator delete will help you make more power, um, remove those flow restrictions. If you really want to get into it, you might be able to find somebody that can make you a custom intake manifold. Um, I don't think it's really needed, but it'd be something to consider to increase your plenum and make more power. More flow, more power. I'm not gonna jump under the car, but let's talk exhaust. Definitely wanna get a cat back exhaust. Um, remove as many restrictions as you can, depending on your stock setup and how many restrictions are in there. Um, 2.5 inches is kind of common. If you're not trying to make more than 300, 350 wheel horsepower, you're probably not gonna run any problems with running 2.5 inch. Uh, you could go to a full three inch exhaust if you felt like it, but that's up to you. When it comes to the downpipe, um, a 2.5 inch downpipe is also gonna be nice. Just check with your state laws and you'll be good. Um, the three inch downpipe is also really nice if you're planning on future proofing the car and making sure you have no restrictions going all the way out to 400 wheel horsepower. Not that you can't make 300 or 400 wheel horsepower with a 2.5, I'm gonna try, but uh, it'll definitely make it a lot easier for that turbo to push those exhaust gases out of the way and you're not running up with a restriction, choking up the white gate, all that stuff. So, you know. So we're chasing somewhere between 200 and 300 wheel horsepower now. Um, and we're talking about those heat concerns. First thing is, do I use an intercooler or do I choose water meth injection? So I would say water meth injection. Your stock intercooler can make it up to 300 wheel horsepower. It's not, it's a restriction, flow restriction, but it's not that big a flow restriction. And honestly, you're gonna see better results as far as heat goes. As long as you have meth in the tank, you'll be good. Um, but this stock intercooler can make it all the way to there. I recently changed because I'm chasing bigger numbers. So I have my torque intercooler down here. Hard to see with the bumper on, but I'm not taking it off because that's too much work. Much bigger intercooler. I will say if you're running a front mount intercooler, um, you're gonna see a hit to your radiator temps. Your water temps are gonna be a little bit high. So to combat that, you can move down to a colder thermostat. So I wanna say in my engine, at least, it comes with a 180 degree thermostat. You get a 160 degree thermostat and you will see some power gains up top when you're pushing those runs and pulls. So those are two things you can do to control heat 
intercooler not needed for this power level but if you'd like so you could do so let's talk about meth so when it comes to methanol so the methanol system comes all the way back from the tank i wired it next to my fuel line up through the bottom and then sprays right into the throttle body and that line is my meth line my methanol comes all the way from the back to the throttle body sprays colder temps um, how methanol works is it's going to evaporate and it's going to take the heat out of the system, out of the air in the combustion chamber, and you're going to see temperatures drop below ambient. So, not going to fit in the trunk, but this is my water methanol tank. In the tire well is where I have my pump. You can install it in a various different configurations, but I feel like this one's the easiest one. Tank here, pump there, goes to the front, sprays methanol, keeps your temps cold. Colder than ambient. Can't do that with an intercooler. It could be 90, 100 degrees outside, and you'll still see 70, 60 degree intake temps. And that is physics hacking. It is also going to clean your intake valves and make sure you don't get any carbon deposits. So try to keep those carbon deposits down. So it's really good for that too. So that's why I preach the good word of methanol water injection. Could be water, could be methanol, could be 50-50. Depends on what you want to run and what nozzle you have. Make sure you have the right size nozzle. Uh, shout out to QuickTime Performance. They can get you set up with the right methanol kit. So this intercooler is not very big, um, but I know the newer generations have that front mount intercooler that's kind of small. Um, I don't know how different they are, but I want to say they're not too diff different as far as like a flow restriction. You should be able to make the same amount of power. Um, given you have methanol or something to overcome the temperatures, but You'll see. Your biggest limiter coming around to being full bolt on is going to be the head studs. So once you start pushing around 280 foot pounds of torque or so, the heads are going to start to lift and you're going to start noticing some head gasket issues. So that's about the time you want to change out your head studs. That 300 to 350 wheel horsepower range, you're going to be talking about two big things, fuel and the turbocharger. The max you're really going to get out of that tiny turbocharger, that stock, um, is around 300 wheel horsepower. You might be able to push it a little bit further, but it won't be happy and you won't see its life last much longer than that. So you'll be looking for either a hybrid or stuffed turbo setup or a big turbo setup to make power within that range or higher. When you're talking about turbocharger options, you're really going to be looking at a stuffed or hybrid turbo or a big turbo situation. On the stuffed or turbo or stuffed or hybrid turbo situation, uh, you're looking at a lower cost. Um, what you're taking is a stock frame turbo and boring out the internals to fit a bigger compressor wheel and things inside. So that way you can flow more. On the big turbo side, the setup's a little more expensive because it involves some custom work, um, but you'll be able to reach higher power levels in the long run. Um, but you just gotta really gauge what your power goals are for the car and how much you're willing to spend. When talking about fueling on this engine, pump gas is only going to get you so far as far as timing advance and your tuning. So um, you really want to make sure you start looking into fuels like E85 or methanol injection or maybe some higher octane race fuel. The two upgrades you're going to be looking to make on this platform, I think for both the old and new generation are going to be your low pressure fuel pump and the fuel line. Those are two upgrades you wanna make sure you do so you can run those different kind of fuels. Your high pressure fuel pump is very capable of running that fuel. Um, you just make sure you wanna treat each tank of fuel that you add with some sort of alcohol treatment to protect the cylinders. Other than that, you should be good to go. If you're running something like E85, you can get away with some E85 mixes on the stock setup, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, you could run up to like an E30 or E40 blend before you run a check engine light, but you really want to make sure you do those preventative steps, get that low pressure fuel pump and the fuel line so you don't run into any bigger issues down the line. So to talk about something else, methanol injection is definitely going to help. You could pair that with E85 to make an E85 methanol injection kind of tune if you're talking to your tuner about that sort of thing. That would be kind of max power. I like to run methanol injection as its own standalone thing for preventative reasons. Uh, you can incorporate it in your tune, but just be careful because when you run out of methanol, it's like running out of 93 in your tune for 93 and you put 87 in the car. You're gonna really wanna make sure you baby it so you don't blow anything up. 
So when we're talking about making power between 350 wheel horsepower to 400, um, it's really gonna come down to two more things on top of flow and heat and fueling in your turbocharger choice. Actually, turbocharger choice is one of those things. So with that power range, you're gonna be looking at a turbocharger that might not necessarily be a stuff turbo. There's a possibility a stuff turbo is going to get you to that point between 350 and 400, but a bigger turbo is definitely gonna handle that with more ease and less drama. Things to consider when you're trying to reach that power level, you're most likely already running full E85 and methanol as far as your fueling up or your fueling choice goes. The other thing I wanna talk about is as you start to reach these higher power levels, you definitely wanna talk about maybe getting into building out the block. You've already done the head studs, but consider doing pistons and rods and bearings as you reach those higher power levels. Sure, you could do it on a stock block, but how long your stock block lasts is gonna depend and you really don't wanna worry about that. So just go ahead and start considering doing the pistons and rods, bearings, all of those things on the internals and you should be good to keep pushing on with your power levels. So you made it all the way to this point in the video. You're trying to make more than 400 wheel horsepower. You want the big numbers. Well, that's gonna involve taking, making sure you have a fully built block, head to toe, fully built, forged internals, um, making sure you either are going with a CSS design or a closed deck, uh, depending on if you're trying to reach like 500 wheel horsepower or like 700 wheel horsepower. Um, both of those things are gonna be need to consider. Uh, your fuels are definitely gonna be race fuels or E85, C85, methanol. You're probably looking at more fueling upgrades as you will start to run up against the limits of the injectors and maybe the high pressure fuel pump but you'll be in uncharted territory at that point. At least when I made this video, you'll probably be there. You're likely already pushing more power than some of the TCR cars that are out there. So more props to you if you were doing that. Um, but I don't have that much to say about that range of power because it's so far out of my budget. <laughs> I'm gonna try to wrap up before the rain comes in here. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video was a help to you. I know I definitely was looking for something like this when I was Growing up, I saw like, you know, EcoBoost versions of this video or Honda versions of this video. And I wanted to do this version of this video. So hopefully it helps you out and your build path and feel free to write comments so I can answer some questions about stuff or you guys can have a discussion about these sort of things. Um, just wanna see if, you know, we can make more power and not spend a lot of money doing it.